Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's your boy Inside Eleven, and you'll be back at it again, man. And right now, I just want to tap into and talk about and start to break down why, you know, the subconscious version of ourselves is not going to want to let go of your awareness, of your observation, of your attention, meaning that you have a subconscious version of you that is magnetic, magnetically, keep in mind, magnetically inside of you. And keep in mind, it's a subjective point of view that you have of you or it's something that you've developed a self-image about you based on past experiences and based off, uh, you know, certain things that you've experienced from your outside environment, especially when you were growing up and stuff like that. So we have this subconscious version of ourselves and this subconscious version of ourselves is probably made up of our irrational fears of the experiences that we, was, that we had when we were younger, when we were little. And now that we're grown adults, right now we may be experiencing a lot of these irrational fears a lot of these uh, emotions that is just coming up to the surface because it's based upon something that we have agreed upon. Ooh now we wanna talk about it from the esoteric perspective, my brother, my sister. We can talk about it like this, right? You spiritual, right? When you was younger, you was probably really, you might've been really depressed, you might've been really sad, you might've been really pissed off, whatever it may be, right? And the more time that you spent inside of that depression, inside of that sadness, inside of that emotion, wherever emotion it may be, if it may be, just what, 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 it could be a lot of things, right? Because um, these emotions really just play out as ways to prevent us and our observation and our experiences from being guided out into a new parameter and things like that. Because the circle has power. The circle that you created has power, meaning that there's the subconscious version of you is magnetically pulling in your awareness, meaning that today you can try to put your mind on and be, you know what, man, I'm grateful for my health. I'm grateful because of the fact that I can breathe in air. But you know what the subconscious version of gonna, is going to do? It's going to pull you back. It's going to show you a memory. It's going to make you aware of something that happened to you in the past that has nothing to do with the present. It's going to bring up an emotion that is non-benevolent to keep you being that version of you because the subconscious version of you honestly does not want you to change. See, it's a, a safe, it's a, it's a mechanism of fail safe, meaning that if you try to change, if you try to spring forth in you, it's gonna try to reprogram the material that you put forth as old material, meaning that you can, in the physical realm, you can go out and try to take, out, take an action you can go try to say something you've never said before, you're literally gonna be held back and pulled back to not do that because your chakras, your brain, your mind cannot identify with that new action that you're taking. It's gonna want you to take actions. It's gonna want you to repeat certain thoughts, certain feelings that, that are within that frame of reference for the existence that we have lived when we was younger. Okay, awesome, cool. Now we have to learn to what? Manage our fears, because our fears are just subjective in our own head. Fears are just in our own head. It has nothing to do with the reality. There's there's laws in reality, let's not get it twisted. Like if you jump in from the building, and because there's a law called gravity, I wouldn't really call it that, but you know, for the sake of the science folk out there, for the sake of the overly logical folk out there, yeah, you're gonna jump out from the building, gravity, it, it affects everybody the same, you know? You know what I'm saying? So everybody is affected by similar laws. What we wanna do is, however, we wanna be able to take advantage of our ability to change by taking our awareness, by taking our attention and putting it on things that are more benevolent in nature than things that are non-benevolent, meaning things that are non-benevolent from the perspective of what? From the form of thoughts, feelings, actions, emotions, subconscious awarenesses, patterns that keep us at that old version of ourselves. Now, there's nothing wrong with the old version of ourselves. However, if you're anything like me, it does not allow you to experience life at the level that you would like to experience. Meaning that there's things that you might wanna do. There's things that you might wanna say. There's feelings beyond the feelings that you've experienced when you was younger, you're, that those concentration of those feelings that you wanna feel beyond those things. But if we keep vibrating, if we keep consciously because we're not consciously doing it, we're subconsciously 
wired to that old version of ourselves because it's what we're familiar with it's what feels normal it's what it's what feels logical it's what feels normal to go up against your self-image to go up against who you think you are would be abnormal so for you to if you've been like if you're anything like me and you hated yourself your whole life it's going to be abnormal for your old version of self to agree with this new feeling because this new feeling says I love myself. This new feeling says I am fulfilled rather than lack. So the subconscious version of you is not going to like that because to the subconscious version, that's going to be a contrary belief to its existence. Meaning that now you have two dispositions in one body fighting for the overall awareness, right? And that's really, really interesting because you know when you say you get into a lot of um, esoteric stuff and a lot of information, what we, we want to get from it is this is literally what science calls uh, multiple personality disorder, disassociated personality disorder. Like, technically, we have a personality for each situation that we step into our lives. Sometimes you can just make different personalities. You can do all types of shit. The point is, this is your power. You're able to create a state of being that you resonate with so strongly that it actually becomes your reality, right? But what I'm saying right now is that we're resonating strongly with something, with a version of ourselves that is keeping us at a version of reality that we may not necessarily like. Now, if you like your reality, this is not the video for you. But if you want to change your reality, then yes, sir, this is the video for you. Because you're going to have to take your attention and you have to place it on new habits that are aligned with the new image that you see yourself as. You're going to have to see things in a way you've never saw them before to be someone you've never been before. You're going to have to begin to feel things in a way that you've never done before in order to beam things. Because the seeing and the feeling establishes the magnetic state. Before you do and before you talk, you have to see and you have to feel what it, what it is inside of you before it's expressed outside of you. So once you see and feel yourself as that person that you want to be and you are placing your awareness in that, then you automatically do and talk as if you were that person. And that's only if you've placed enough awareness, enough attention on the things that you are, you know, positively accelerating towards rather than the things that you are negatively accelerating towards. Meaning that when I woke up this morning, what did I do? I woke up, I said, I'm thankful for this bed. And I didn't just say it, I also felt it. Then I said, I'm so thankful that I got a car to go to work. Well, that's not maybe something to be too thankful for, but the point is you want to start this process of generating a new sense of feeling that creates well-being inside of you rather than a feeling that says, um, trash, you know, my mama didn't love me, so I don't love me. My whole family disliked me, so shit, I'm going to dislike me. There is a subconscious pattern that we are unknowingly playing out. We're looking at our life consciously and we're saying, I'm thinking and I'm feeling a bunch of thoughts and feelings that are not taking me towards my highest possible good. So we're taking steps to adjust the thought process, which is just the pattern that plays out mentally, subjectively, subconsciously, that, take us, that takes us to that life consciously. Before you're a loser in real life, it's because you've accepted that you was a loser subconsciously. Man, someone could have told you you was a loser when you was a little kid. And you could have just accepted that and went by that opinion your whole life. Repeated it, repeated it, repeated it. And then you know what's amazing? Once we establish a pattern, we also seek to validate that belief every single day. So if you have a belief that says, I'm stupid and I'm ugly, guess what? You're going to create situations, thoughts and feelings that are gonna validate that belief for you because you're proving to yourself unknowingly your subconscious belief system. And you're sitting to yourself like, damn, I am a sucker, I am a loser, only because you validated that old belief instead of taking a step forward towards that new version of yourself that's grateful, that's fulfilled, that's enjoying their life, you know, that's observing with gratitude and thanks. Instead of putting in energy and, val and doing things every day to validate that. Because you got to remember, the subconscious version of ourselves has so much pull in the game. Has so much hold in the game. It's been in the game for so long. It's been running this whole mind and body. So 
Of course, it has a lot of power. But what has power is really what we're consciously paying attention to. Because that's what feeds the subconscious. You know, we'll end it with this, guys. The Indian proverb says you got two wolves fighting in front of you. The one that you, the one that will win is the one that you will fucking feed. So you got to choose who you will feed. Real shit.